Welcome back. It's 12 minutes away from 8 o'clock. If you're keeping an eye on the time this Monday, I'm Gareth Edwards. Uh, you might have to get another COVID-19 jab, even if you've had or two already, and a booster. So this could be the fourth shot, essentially. As more COVID-19 variants develop, further boosters may be needed to increase immunity against the virus and prevent one suffering severe symptoms. Let's find out uh, why you might need to do this. I'm joined by Professor Alex Welt from the SA Center for Epidemiological Modeling and Analysis. Prof, always good to have you on ENCA. Thank you again for your time. A lot of people aren't going to be that keen. I'm sure you know the criticism. I've gone for the two shots. I've gone for a booster. It's still not working. Why do we need to maybe go for another one? Good morning. Hi. Well, look, it is an awkward question, actually. And, uh, and I think it's safe to say, as you um, anticipated, that it's simply not going to happen, that uh, everybody lines up in their droves to get yet another, yet another, yet another. And part of the reason that's a bit awkward right now is because you know, there's not a lot of death and destruction from COVID at this moment. And so, you know, the perceived level of risk is not particularly high. So just for context, I mean, the issue is at the moment that most of us have had some exposure, whether it's from vaccines or illness or both. Um, I, for example, have had three doses of vaccine. And since the last one, I've had COVID again. And um, I had it fairly shortly before I got the most recent booster. So, you know, it, it, the immunity we are getting is not very long lived. It's a bit like spending all day in the sun at the beach, um, not covered, and then having to apply and reapply and reapply again the SPF 50 lotion. You know, it gives you a high level of protection, but only if you keep reapplying and reapplying. And at some point, you may want to say, well, why don't I put a top on or sit under an umbrella or not spend the whole day at the beach. And so I think this is the question this raises, um, that, you know, is this something that we're absolutely banking on without any other plans? Are we just relying on vaccines? Do we have other options? And also what kinds of vaccines do we have? You know, so at the moment, the experience is that the vaccines provide good coverage, good protection <clears throat> against having severe disease. So at an individual level, the protection is very good. What we've seen with the Omicron variant is that um, protection against acquiring virus and passing it on is not very good. So if you take the vaccine, you'll get some protection for yourself, but you're not actually doing an awful lot <clears throat> to limit transmission. You would maybe really want to think about wearing a mask and avoiding crowded public spaces if you want to take yourself out of the transmission network. And the important thing about the variants is that you know, we don't know where the variant evolution is going. And anybody who thinks they know where it's going is, is deluded because we don't know these things. And it's not a simple matter of, oh, doesn't the virus try to avoid, you know, immune system pressure? Doesn't it try this? And that virus doesn't try anything. It's a lottery. It's just random molecular events that generate new variants. And so if you take many, many rolls of the dice, you have a better chance of getting a six. And the roles of the dice are people who are infected and producing replicating virus. So if you want to reduce the, you know, the long-term risks of getting more unpleasant variants, variants that's more difficult to treat, variants that's more difficult to survive, variants more difficult to get a vaccine against, we need to reduce transmission. And right now, certainly, I think we should not be relying on vaccines yeah. because yeah. it's not enough in and of itself. So I think, yes, it's good to keep an eye on are there better vaccines? And I think people who buy them in bulk need to look at what are the, you know, the risk, cost, benefit profiles of different vaccines that are emerging. And I think we can't rely on something that needs to be boosted every couple of months. That's not going to work. We need to look for better products that have a longer duration. And we also need to not simply say, oh, well, thank God lockdown's over. Let's go back to all our I usual... I suppose there's an interesting way, there's a comparison here. As you say, off the back of lockdown, we all just suddenly forgot that COVID uh, is actually still there just because we aren't highlighting the low numbers every day. doesn't mean COVID is gone. Prof, because there's two ways that people have tended to describe this to me, either off air or on air. One is we all got a measles vaccine when we were much younger. But that was just one measles vaccine. But now every year, we all tend to go for our flu vaccines, year after year after year, and no one seems to complain about that. Why do you think, uh, as a professor in this, that, that people are so against another COVID-19 booster shot? Do you think it's just because of a, a PR nightmare, the way it was handled? We don't complain about the flu jab. 
but but almost nobody takes the flu jab. I mean, that's why mm. we don't complain because there's no. I mean, you, know, you say, oh, I don't, know, I don't know what circles you move in. I don't know anybody who takes the flu jab every year, and so I think it's you know it's an abject failure. This idea that somehow you can sell people on an annual booster and offer them some protection. People just don't go for that. So I think there isn't really any big difference between the flu vaccine situation and what you're facing with COVID, that people don't sign up for doing something again and again and again when there's no perceived risk. Mm. Um, and that's not because people are recalcitrant and stupid and stubborn. It's because that's how things work. You know, even people who should be taking chronic medication, whether it's for asthma or diabetes or TB or HIV, it's always difficult to keep taking something, particularly when you're doing well. So I think there's nothing very special about this, actually. I think it is a standard problem. And I don't think that just making more of these short-lived vaccines is going to be the answer. We need something that is a bit more robust. So the reason we yeah. get away with one measles vaccine is because of a little bit of luck that the virus does not evolve very rapidly. And so the protection is very long-lived. That's mm -hmm. not the situation we have at the moment. And so it's not satisfactory. I think we do need better products so that, you know, of course, People listening here are not the people inventing vaccines, mainly maybe one or two sitting at home are part of that process. So, you know, not much actionable information, but I think the actionable part is to avoid other unnecessary risks as well and not to think, well, you know, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm a good boy. I take my boosters now. I don't have to worry about anything else or to be told, well, you know, that's the only thing you can do. There are many other things we can constructively do to yeah, reduce yeah. unnecessary transmission. And that's a long-term thing we're going to have to live with for a while until maybe one day we get a really great vaccine that has long-lived protection and then be home and clear. But, uh, you know, we don't know that that's going to happen or when it's going to happen. Well, I, I think hopefully sooner rather than later, Prof. I'm sure you'll agree with that. But I always appreciate uh, your time. <laughs> always good fun to talk to you. What circles do I move in? That's a good question. Uh, flu jabs. Professor Alex Walt <laughs> from the SA Centre uh, for Epidemiological Modelling and Analysis. It's a